All right, we're back on the record on case number 2317423DM, Ms. Schmelzer. Thank you. Um, I believe we left off with that defendant's exhibit A had been admitted and I have some questions for my client regarding the admitted exhibit. Um, does everyone have that before them? Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Guzman, we took a short break for lunch. Um, I just want to remind you, you are obviously still under oath. Um, where we left off was uh, exhibit A. Um, and so I'm just gonna ask you some questions about those um, images that are seen there. Um, can you kind of describe what um, images are seen on this first page? Uh, I mean, that's me. Obviously, yeah, taking a picture, holding each, the bottom one is Kelsey, uh, Kelly's on the top. Uh, that's- How old were they in these pictures about? about? I mean, it looks like Kelly might be 10, maybe nine, somewhere in there. Kelsey's probably five, six, something like that. And what kind of things were you guys doing? Activities or when um, these pictures were taken? Well, that's the big pony on the top uh, up at Mackin Island. I'm guessing maybe uh, around a fire or something with Kelsey or 4th of July, maybe uh, doing the, with the light stuff. But that's pretty standard stuff of me loving on the girls like that. Okay. Um, page two. Another group of pictures. What's going on, you know, here? What, what are uh, these pictures? The, the top two are, are Fourth of July Cherry Festival stuff. The the bottom one is at Barnes. We've kids like to to ride their bikes from the house to Barnes. That's one of the favorite <laughs> things about where we live, our area where we live. And obviously, uh, what kid doesn't love ice cream? So we do that quite often. And how old in the, in the top two pictures? Um, Cherry Fest, uh, Fourth of July. About how old were the kids there? Kelvin looks maybe eight or nine, ten, somewhere in there. <laughs> Kelsey's you know, four or five, something like that. Uh, the lower picture about the lower how picture is probably two years old. Maybe, yeah, two years, a couple of years old, a few years old. Okay. Um, and moving on to the third page now, um, can you share what that pic those pictures are of? Uh, the top one was from the summer, taking the kids flying in my dad's airplane. Uh, this this last summer yeah um and the bottom picture uh, the bottom ones obviously uh when the kids are real little just mowing mowing the yard they uh obviously wanted to help help me out and be with me and um help me in any way they could and is that um in that bottom picture is that kelvin yeah that's kelvin and Callie. and how old about were they at that age uh, kelvin had to have been four or five would be my guess. Um, moving on to the fourth page here, uh, these pictures. Can you kind of describe what you know how old the kids are, what's going on? Uh, just doing the things they love, being a part of their life. Top of Pirates Go, uh, always love to do the go karts. Uh, the bottom ones, you know, fishing, uh, sledding at my parents' house. Obviously, uh, these pictures are when the kids are pretty pretty young. Um, just just love doing the things that they love to do. Okay. About how old um, would Calvin be in that top picture of the go kart? Uh, maybe five. And the sledding picture in the middle? Maybe similar, maybe a little younger. Is that Calvin? Yeah, there? that's Calvin there. And fishing? Yeah, yeah, Calvin and my sister's son, probably. Um, they, they had to be 10, 10 or so, maybe even a little younger. Uh, let's see, out of page five, what uh, what are we seeing here? Uh, that's the top two pictures for Callie and I in uh, Florida two years ago. Um, I've taken the opportunity to take the older two each at a separate time to Florida when my parents are down there to spend time with them, have some one-on-one -on -one time with the kids, uh, just to, to focus on them and enjoy some time with my parents, enjoy some time with each one of the kids. Uh, the bottom one is out on the boat with, with Kelsey, letting her drive. I'm not sure what that bottom picture is with Calvin. It looks like it actually could be a Jen's parents. Um, just uh, loving on them. And the, the, the focus of my life. I mean, the, about, the kids. About how old was your daughter in that top picture? In she, had, she had to have been 11, 12, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then the one, the other top picture on the. That was right the same trip. The same yeah. trip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the boat picture. Yeah, Kelsey looks three or four. And, and the bottom picture with Calvin. Uh, he looks pretty young, probably 10. And moving on to page six here, uh, what are these images? Uh, either Cherry Festival, yeah, it looks like Cherry Festival, Fourth of July stuff. Uh, Ernie's trying to make him look like a normal good father. Was, you know, 10 years old or so. Uh, 
um, even a little younger in the next picture. That's at the Grand Frankly, Hotel I think pool. is accurate. Kids just love to swim there, and and, uh, and of course love love island time. Um, so. And moving on to page seven, there's another group of pictures. What what are we looking at here? Uh, getting a Christmas tree. That looks like that could be four or five years ago with Kelsey, the youngest, maybe a little like August long. Yeah, four or five years old. Um, taking the kids to Michigan games, uh, something they love to do. Um, that's that's Cali, so that's probably uh, six years ago, maybe. Um, that was a day that we went to a football game during the day, you know, Michigan hockey game at night. Um, and then uh, Mo and the kids love to, to ride on the mower, help me when they can, uh, just to be part of what I'm doing. Um, that's Callie and I, uh, two years ago, coaching her softball team. Um, were you, you were a coach in that picture? You were? Yeah. Yep, were, okay. yeah. Oh. It looks, yeah, it was either the year I coached her team or the year before where I coached uh, Calvin's team, but it looks like that's the year that I coached her team. Okay. And page eight, we've got a couple more pictures here. Can you share what those are? Um, that top picture is uh, actually in our front yard, our current house, but it was when my grandparents lived there on my uh, grandpa's tractor. Uh, Calvin loved that thing. Um, always wanted to be helping me or ride, just riding on the tractor. Uh, bottom picture is uh, Kelsey and I at Pirates Cove. Uh, About how old was Calvin in that picture, that top picture? Uh, he had to have been maybe two. I bet that was the, I bet that was 2010. So that was the year my grandpa passed away. So I had and, to been around that time. And the bottom picture? Uh, that looks like it's three, four years ago with Kelsey. And moving on to page nine, another group of pictures here. Uh, that's uh, Kelsey's uh, birthday party from this past June. Um, that the top right is the kids and I. Uh, we went on a bike ride on the Portman Lake Trail. That was uh, maybe uh, August September of this year. And then uh, Kelsey and I went water skiing this past summer. Um, it probably uh, was August. Um, oh, yeah. Are these pictures? You know, obviously not. Every time you've ever been with your real, kids, are, are they just Trevor examples City of deal. some of the stuff that you do with your kids and being around and activities over the years? Right. Um, are you asking the court to award joint physical and legal custody um, by maintaining the parenting time schedule as set forth in the temporary order today? Yes, I am. Um, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Hallelujah. Ms. For this witness. I do. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> May I proceed? Right. Mr. Klusterman, back in October, you testified that one time you attended a Zoom conference for your children. Is that correct? Yes. So it's correct that you've never attended an in-person conference for any of your three children? Um. That could be, that could be true. Did you know that earlier this month on November 2nd, your daughter Kelsey had conferences? Yeah, I'm very well aware of that. And you didn't attend that, did you? Yeah, I did. And Mr. Oops. Klusterman, on November 16th, 2023, your son had conferences, did he not? Yes, he did. And you didn't attend that, did you? No, I. but I also feel like- if Oh, it's okay, it was just a question. yes or no answer. And are you aware that Ms. Klusterman attended both conferences? Yes. We, we, are you aware that he makes five times as much money and they need to eat? On October 18th, your attorney asked you if you had the capacity and disposition to give the children love, <laughs> affection, and guidance. And you answered in the affirmative. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And on that note, isn't it true that you recently told your 15-year-old son, Calvin, that his girlfriend's parents think he is, quote, a douchebag? No, that is false. That is a lie. <laughs> it's funny. And Mr. Klusterman, in October of 2023, you testified that you left your previous employment with UPS. Is that correct? Yes. Isn't it true that you were actually terminated, fired? Uh, sure. Well, it's a yes or no. Were you terminated? Yes. Yes, because I was doing other things, but yes. And Ms. Klusterman, um, part of your job is snow plowing, correct? I love that. Yes. Okay, so like 
last night, this morning, good example. That would have been a busy night for you, busy morning. Um, just like just like Jen going to work during the day. Oh, that's not my question. My question was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I went to work. And if you were living in your own residence, so without your parents, yeah, what would seriously. your plan be for the children during the night that you go out and plow or the morning? Are you leaving them home alone? No. All right. So what's your plan? Um, I have people that work for me. They can do it. Or I have my parents or um, I have other options. And previously you testified that the only employee in your company was you and then your son sometimes helps. And now you're saying you have other employees? Well, I have people that help me out. I mean, my dad will help me. I have cousins that help me, friends that all kinds of people that are willing to help me uh, make everything happen. In uh, um, October, when we were here, your attorney asked you if you have the capacity to provide the children with medical care, and you answered in the affirmative. Is that correct? And you're just going to yeah. say it. <laughs> in August of 2023, did Ms. Klusterman advise you that one of the children had an eye appointment scheduled during your parenting time? Uh, yes, but she was actually wrong on the time and the date. It's okay. I just asked you a yes or no question. You don't have to elaborate. Your attorney can follow up with you on cross or redirect, excuse me. Um, did you advise Ms. Klusterman that that appointment time did not work for you? Uh, I don't recall. I remember telling her that she was wrong on the time of the day because I called, I called about the appointment. Did you tell Ms. Klusterman you were gonna reschedule the appointment? I, I don't recall, I don't recall. I remember the time, the time being the actual time of the appointment was during Jen's parenting time. And you never rescheduled the appointment though, did you? I never canceled or, or never canceled the appointment either because they told me when that appointment was and it was during Jen's parenting time. And earlier today, you testified that during the winter, your work slows down, is that correct? Correct. And you testified that you have more time to take the kids to appointments during the winter. That was your testimony, correct? Correct. Yet you've only ever taken the children to one doctor's appointment during the course of your marriage to the plaintiff. That's not true. Ms. Klusterman, um, in October, you testified that you have the capacity to provide the children with guidance. Is that correct? Correct. Would you agree that in raising two young girls, promoting body positivity is important to that? Oh, Absolutely. Jesus. And would you agree that the way a man speaks to his wife in such regard in front of children is instrumental to the children's guidance in that regard? Absolutely. And yet in front of your children, you told the plaintiff, put clothes on, no one should have to see that. I, I don't recall if the kids were there or not. Hell yes, you said it, and you should have. I don't believe they were, but. And I if they recall. were there, that's probably at odds with promoting bo body positivity, correct? No, I, I'm very good with uh, te teaching my kids and uh, body image and being positive about and believe in themselves. So I don't, I don't agree with that comment. And Mr. Klusman, there's been a lot of discussion about the various activities your kids are involved with, hockey being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, since the temporary order has been in place, are you always timely with getting the children to these events? Yes. Isn't it true that this summer during your parenting time, Callie was dropped off 45 minutes late to her championship? Yeah, I, th th this she's absolutely lost me with the body positivity thing. Like I, there, there's, there's no recovery for me personally. Y y'all make your own decision, but for me personally, we, I, I'm out. Chip softball game. Um, I, I don't believe it was 45 minutes, and I also believe the jet that was okay. When I so if I said, "Are you always timely?" Exactly. And you said yes, and then I asked you about 45 minutes late. And you said, "Well, it wasn't 45 minutes." So well, okay, time, we, so. we can play. I then my mom, I guess, delivered her late. I did not. Why was your mom doing your parenting time exchange, I, or why was your mom transporting? The, no, my mom is all. My parents are all about helping. <laughs> I was never in. Jen and I out <laughs> when it's available. <laughs> and on Friday, November twenty fourth, two thousand twenty three, was Callie brought late to her hockey game in Detroit? No. 
So if Miss Klusterman received a text from Callie's coach asking where Callie was, that would be objection the hearsay. Callie was on time for the game. I mean, what the person said would be hearsay. <laughs> I guess there might not be a foundation for whether he would know about the text saying, yeah. either. I, I don't know. I know that's not the objection, but yeah, yes, like his, his answer is that she was on time. If you have something to suggest that she wasn't, it was you know, she was time. on time for the game. So. Understood, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Klusterman. You testified earlier about the benefits of having parental controls on phones. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. And have you told your son that the plaintiff, Jennifer, should not be allowed to access his phone because you are the one that pays for it? I have never said that. And despite- I, I, know, I know he has said that, but I have not said that. And despite your testimony earlier about the importance of parental controls, as of today's date, have you put any restrictions on Calvin's phone? Jen has those, is in charge of those restrictions. So and we, and we, communicate, not, and we communicate about those restrictions. But you have not put any on Kelvin's phone. Jen's in charge of that. Jen's in charge of a lot of things when it comes to your kids. Fair statement? So am I. Mr. Klusterman, would it be fair to say that there is tension between your parents and Ms. Klusterman? No. So despite the issue you testified to earlier, you'd say there's no tension between Jen and your parents. I think it's more awkward than tension. I don't think there's tension. Okay, so awkward. There's an awkwardness between Jen and your well, parents? I think that was, that's pretty common in a divorce. I, I didn't ask if it was common, just asking for your specific They have situation. no ill will towards Jen. And Mr. Klusterman, the ex parte personal protection order issued by this court it allowed parenting time exchanges through a neutral third party. She, yeah, she's from your I, perspective, what does the word it. neutral mean? Can you, can you repeat that? Just, just, what does the word neutral mean to you? Um, I guess maybe. Like maybe not Jen's parents, not my parents, but a friend of both of us, per se. Maybe that would be a good example. So when you sent your mom over to the marital residence to pick up the children after the PPO was issued, she's not neutral, right? When, what, what day was this? The day, the so Sunday. Oh, that Sunday. Well, oh but my that, God. That wasn't, no, I didn't know about a neutral party. But I didn't even know about I didn't even know about a PPO on that day. Well, you were served with the PPO on that. Oh my God, this is really, really making them look horrible in my eyes. You monster! You sent their grandmother over to pick them up for a change. Uh, I can't think of a more appropriate thing to do. Okay. After after my mom went to get the kids. Okay, but you'd agree she's not a neutral party. But that was objection. I mean, he's she's asking him to interpret the court's order. I think it's very commonly known in this court that neutral means not one of the two parties. Your Honor, I'm asking him to interpret it based on the definition he just gave, which said not our parents. I think he I believe be. his initial testimony was parents, family, friend. No, he not said neither parties. one of our parents and mutual friend. I think he can testify as to whether he thinks. What the hell is she asking for? I am confused here. I, and I, I'm actually really interested to know because at the end of his case, they asked for, he asked for parenting to remain, remain status quo as it was in the temporary order. That is not a wild ask. I, 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 and, and now she's trying to beat him up because, because he sent grandma to pick up the kids. You've got to be kidding me. I, this might work somewhere, but not with me. His parents are neutral or not. I, I mean, I'm not sure what bearing it will have on anything, but I think he could answer that question. Yeah, I mean, maybe my parents 
aren't neutral party, but again, I didn't even know about the PPO when my parents, when my mom and sister went to pick up the kids. And Mr. Klusterman, back in October, you testified, and I think you've reinforced it today, that you were too afraid about violating the PPO, so you didn't exercise your parenting time until you could talk to your, your attorney. Is that correct? That is correct. So you made the decision to forego your parenting time that weekend, correct? Which weekend? After the PPO was served and between the time you could talk to your attorney. Yes. And back on October 18th, 2023, you testified that you didn't know what our family wizard was. Is that correct? That is correct. After speaking with your attorney, did you become aware of what our family wizard was? Yes. When you downloaded the app, did you see multiple communications from Ms. Klusterman trying to arrange parenting time with you? Yes. So it wouldn't really be fair to hold Ms. Klusterman accountable for your lack of knowledge about our family wizard, would it? I believe it is. And Mr. Klusterman, on Friday, June 30th, 2023, so the Friday before you were served with this PPO, did your son text you that the police came to the house looking for you? Objection hearsay as to I mean, statements of the child. I'll be great, Your Honor. Mr. Klusterman, on Friday. Yeah, otherwise sustained it. Yeah. Mr. Klusman, on Friday, June 30th, 2023, did you receive a text indicating the police were Objection looking- hearsay. She already, she already indicated she knows the text from the son. She's trying to get away from it by restating the question without saying it was Kelvin. It's still hearsay because it wasn't from Ms. Klusterman. I think you can testify if he received a text about the police looking from him. I'm not saying who's, did you receive a text? It's still hearsay. Well- I mean, in this circumstance, we know it was the son because you mentioned that, Ms. Lentz. Otherwise, I wouldn't know who sent it. If he has knowledge of whether the police were looking for him is a different way to ask, but that's not the way the question was phrased, and I agree with Ms. Schmeltzer at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. I will rephrase. Mr. Klusterman, did you receive notification that the police were looking for you on Friday? I think that's the same Objection. question. What? I, I agree. That's not what I said. You can ask him if he had knowledge the police were looking for him. You can say yes or no. I mean, that that's all. Otherwise, you are just... In this context, we know it was the son. We know you're asking about whether his son texted him about the gave okay. him true, what you're trying to present as a true statement. Okay, that's. Okay. that's I, I guess what I want to ask is, were you aware the police were looking for you on Friday? And I'm going to object again to hearsay because at this point we now know that she's questioning about a text message that was purportedly sent by the son as the foundation for his knowledge. I still think he could answer if he if he knows whether they were. We, we're not going to get into how. Um, I, I don't agree with the word looking. They weren't looking for me. I mean, sometimes the answer clarifies it too. So it's not all objectionable. I mean, that's, they weren't looking for me. That's not even the first time I had talked to them. So did you have communication with the police before that? Yeah, they had stopped by the house just to see how I was doing. That happened a couple of times. Well, I'm but talking I, about- I don't agree with the comment that I got a text saying they were looking for me. That's not true. Okay, so you had no knowledge the police were trying to communicate with you on that weekend, Friday, June 30th. If I remember correctly, Kelvin said the police stopped by, but they would stop back to talk to me. So you're well, aware then that the police are- I can strike that state. I mean, I, if you want, Ms. Schwalter, I, it's, I don't want to get into what the child said. I, you know, we, th what his, his answer qualifies under what the previous objection was, okay? So it's not something that the court, I'm not going to consider this in my decision, uh, whether the child told him anything. So whether that was stated or not on the record, it's not going to be part of this court's decision. I don't know how else to clarify it. It's a bench trial. So it's not something I have to advise somebody about. I will just not consider it. That's the way it works. Sounds good. All right. So you had knowledge though. Something was going on with the police. No, I don't think I could say that something was going on. They had stopped to talk to me to see if I was okay. All right, Mr. Klusterman, on October 18th, 2023, you were asked about your capacity to provide the children with clothing and you testified that you can do that. Is that correct? That is correct. Did you recently purchase a $275 coat for your minor child? Yes. Did you ask- the understanding that it was not oh, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm talking here, just a yes or no answer. Um, no. So you didn't, so are you changing your answer? Well, you're wrong on the price. I did not, did not buy it, did not spend that much money. Oh wait, how much money did you spend? It was like two twenty. All right, so fifty dollars difference. Thank you for making that point. I mean, you, we're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark. Did you ask the plaintiff if she was agreeable to that price of two hundred and twenty dollars before you purchased it? No, but she had had said. That oh, that's okay. Just a sweater. yes or no answer. And so, after you purchased the coat, did you ask her to reimburse you for half the cost? Yes. And did she reimburse you? No. 
Mr. Glusterman, because she would not reimburse you for half the cost on Sunday, November 19th, 2023, did you initially refuse to send the coat with the child to the parenting time exchange? It's a yes or no answer. Yes. Okay. And when Ms. Klusterman asked for the old coat so that the child had some form of winter gear, did you also refuse initially to provide the old coat to her? Again, no. It's a yes or no answer. No. Mr. Klusterman, based on your action in not giving her this coat, would it be fair to say you care more about sticking it to the Objection. Place? He just said he didn't refuse to provide the old coat. So the new coat. Yeah. If you could restate the question, please. So I mean, based, I, I, let her please sorry, ask the sorry. question. So based on your action, you didn't give her the new coat, and it's because she wouldn't split the cost with it with you. Would it be fair to say you care more about sticking it to Jen than your child having adequate clothing? Objection argument. That's not why I didn't send the coat. So did your mom subsequently leave both coats on the plaintiff's front porch late in the evening on Sunday, November 19th? Yes. So then okay. why did the old coat not make it back when plaintiff asked for it initially? Uh, Jen had sent me a message saying that she wanted the coat to give to our friend Gracie. It was She never stated that Kelsey would wear it. It was too small for Kelsey. Kelsey showed me that it wouldn't even zip close. When Jen said, please send the coat and I'll give it to Gracie, I said, I can just give it to Gracie. Um, I, I can't say what Kelsey told me why she wanted the coat left at our house. And Ms. Grusman, uh, in October, you testified about a Polar Express field trip that you attended. Do you recall that? Yes, when the kids were at Sutton Bay. Isn't it true that that's the only field trip you've ever attended? I don't believe so, no. Ms. Klusterman, you testified. A First of all, this is weird. I hear this in the comments all the time. These are all places I've been because this is where I grew up, and it's not a particularly big town, so it's really strange. I mean, right down to Sutton's Bay, which is very, very small. Um, but, but this this is so petty. I can't. I can't even. I can't even begin. So what? The guy goes to this to this field trip with the kids. I, if he if he does one, he's doing well. If, if he does none, he's doing well. Is he providing for the family? A lot about these emails that you receive from the school and that you love getting them. They're super great. Is that correct? That is correct. And isn't it true that Miss Klusterman is the one that signs you up for those emails every year? No. Mr. Klusterman, would it be fair to say that you have a problem controlling your anger? No. All right, I'm going to have you watch some exhibits which were previously admitted. Uh, the first of it is going to be exhibit one. If they're previously admitted, we don't need to rewatch them. We've already watched them. All right, Mr. Klusterman. I, I, would, agree with, I would agree with that. I mean, they're admitted. So, I mean, you can talk about them, but unless there's something that we're disputing about it at this point, we probably don't need to go over them again. I will watch, I will I will review all ad admitted exhibits if that's helpful to everyone. Understood, Your Honor. Mr. Klusman, we watched a series of videos um, in October. A lot of them, you were yelling at your children. I believe one of them, you said, don't play me, your little shit, you little shit. Oh, I never get what I want. I'm going to cry. And all of these videos, you're you're yelling, your voice is elevated. So after being reminded of those videos, would it still be your position that you don't have a problem controlling your anger? I can control my anger, yes. Do you think that responding to your children in that manner is you controlling your anger? Yes. And was your anger out of control when you punched the plaintiff in the face in 2019? That never happened. You were prosecuted initially for it, though? Uh, not for punching her in the face. No, I don't like your choice of words there, but that, that's the wrong wrong choice of words. And Mr. Klusterman, on October 18th, 2023, you testified a lot about how you were afraid of Ms. Klusterman videotaping you. Is that correct? That is correct. And would it be 
fair to say that after someone gets, we'll say, hit in the face, that videotaping to ensure it doesn't happen again would be a reasonable response? I think the timing is questionable. And Mr. Klusman, you testified a lot about money being a problem in your marriage. Is that correct? Yes, very much so. And would it be fair for me to say that during your marriage, you felt that you paid for everything? Uh, no, not, no, not hundred percent. There were things that Jen paid for. And you're aware that any income earned during marriage is marital funds, joint absolutely, income. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jen and I worked together on those. So you both paid for things during your marriage. Yeah, absolutely. And Mr. Klusterman, you've testified a lot about your son, Calvin, that he's an amazing person. You're super proud of him. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. And over the various videos we hear, we can hear you calling Calvin things such as little punk, jerk, and little shit. I think earlier you testified that you called him an ass. Um, that's not really indicative of someone who cares super deeply for their children, is it? Oh, please. Uh, I don't know. I don't agree with that. And Mr. Klusterman, during these proceedings, did you tell your son Calvin that he can choose where he wants to spend his time? like his time between Jen and I? Correct. No, I never told him that. Mr. Klusman, you say things that you don't mean a lot. Is that correct? That is not correct. Well, for example, earlier today, you were questioned about a text message that you wrote to plaintiff on April 21st, 2023. And the specific text was, the phone has caused so many addiction issues. Do you recall that testimony from earlier today? Yes, I do. And then your testimony today on that was, mm, I don't really have addiction issues. I have friends is what you called them. Is that correct? Yeah, mine too. So then why say it to plaintiff in the first place? To calm a situation. I'm trying to, I was at that point, I was trying to not get divorced. So you were lying to the plaintiff? No, no. And in October of 2023, when we were here earlier, there was a video in which you said that church was a waste of time. Do you recall that video? Yes. When you were questioned about it, you said, mm, I didn't really mean that. Is that correct? That is correct. So again, here you're saying another thing where saying one thing outside of court, when you get in from the judge, you're changing your story, correct? No. How can we really believe anything you've said when there's a consistent pattern of you saying things you don't mean? That's not, there, there is a pattern, that's not true. <laughs> On October um, 18th or 17th, not sure which day, but we watched a video in which you told your son he was uncoachable and that the hockey coaches wouldn't get talent out of him. And then again, you've testified today about how proud you are of him. Um, Absolutely. Which are your which statement is true? The one in the video about him being uncoachable, or the one that you said today in front of referee? Hayden? Both. I think there's uh, times uh, that any kid can uh, be uncoachable, but when he makes changes, then he is coachable and works hard. So I think both of those things are true. Mr. Klusterman, um, you've testified a lot about with your involvement with the kids. I'm going to have you look at Plaintiffs Exhibit 45, which was previously admitted. Your Honor, counsel, would you like me to screen share or would you like to look at it in front of you? I'll leave that to you all. Oh, but it's so much better than marriage. Just as long as he can see it. Uh, Mr. Uh, it's really Mr. Klusterman's preference, Your Honor. Sure. All right, Mr. Klusterman, so you're looking at Exhibit 45. Um, in this text message with the plaintiff, she's providing you some information about volleyball, booster club, and you write back, I don't give a crap about any of it. Just do your thing. Would it be safe to say that Ms. Klusterman's thing during your marriage was arranging all of the logistics for the family as it pertains to the children's activities? No, a booster meeting has nothing to do with the children. Yes, it is as it is in 90% of marriages to this day. And what about the volleyball email from above that? I guess I don't know what that but what that text means or is in rela uh, relation to volleyball email i'm asking you about it looks like i'm asking you about a volleyball email 
And Mr. Klusterman, isn't it true that your involvement with the children as of recently is due to the temporary order and it's not a voluntarily voluntary choice on your part? Absolutely not. And earlier today, your attorney asked you a question about if parents were requested to attend a meeting at school, would you go? And you responded with, yeah, or I get the information from Jen. Is that correct? That is correct, but you uh, you're... So most of the time, is it safe to say that Ms. Klusterman gave you the information and you didn't go? Didn't go, that's one time. I'm just saying one time. Generally, would you attend meetings at school or would Ms. Klusterman attend and tell you about them? Um, I, let's, we, we can say Jen, Jen uh, attended. I, I, I never felt the need for both of us to attend. When when you have three kids, you divide and conquer. I'm not going to leave two kids home and go both go to a meeting. Mr. Klusterman, in regard to the PPO that was in place, uh, you testified that you didn't go to the children's sporting events out of a fear for violating the PPO. Is that correct? It is correct. And you're aware that the PPO had no bearing on your ability to attend a public event? Um, I didn't know right away and then I was advised not to. So you and not attending the children's events after the issuance with the PPO, that was your choice, right? Um, and, 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 no, it was not my choice right away, not until I got clarification. Okay, so after you got clarification and you're like, okay, the PPO doesn't per prevent me from being at the public event, you still voluntarily chose not to go. Correct. For my safety. In October, you testified that your communication with Ms. Klusterman has been good as of recently. Is that correct? Yeah, it's up and down. We struggle at times. And at the time you made this statement, isn't it true that you were sending Ms. Klusterman a daily countdown of how many days she had until she needed to get out of the marital house? Uh, I don't recall that, no. You don't recall texting her every day. That's cold, but I endorse it if he was. Hey, I don't recall it being every day, no. <laughs> and earlier today, you testified that you hope to have a check to Ms. Klusterman sometime next week. Is that correct? I mean, as soon as I get it, she will get it. So in October, when you were sending Ms. Klusterman these countdown messages, you were nowhere close to having her payment to her, were you? Um, uh, it's, it's been a little more of a struggle than what I was hoping it would be. And Mr. Klusterman, did you send Ms. Klusterman a message saying like you'll it. find out how small your circle really is? Yep. Did you call Ms. Klusterman a pathetic human via OFW? Uh, yes, I did. Only after she attacks me. Would it be fair to say that the communication between you and Ms. Klusterman is not really good? Um, I would actually say it's fairly good until she just attacks me over something and then I just have to, I just get uh, upset because she's, the things that she's going after me about are just, just her games, just tired of her games. Like, let's get along and do what. Uh, yes, they say mean things to each other. What's best for our children. Snows. And Mr. Klusterman, the plaintiff recently stayed at your cousin's home in Muskegon, is that correct? That is correct. Did you call your cousin after this and reprimand him for allowing Ms. Klusterman to stay there? I did not. Mr. Klusterman, you understand that despite the outcome of this case, you're going to have to co-parent with the plaintiff for years, correct? Absolutely. I look forward to it. So it wouldn't be a bad thing for Ms. Klusterman to have a good relationship with your parents, would it? No, I, I hope we get to that point. Again, when the games stop, we will get there. And Mr. Klusterman, you testified today that you are not romantically involved with a third party. That was your testimony, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Isn't it true that you send text Perfect messages summary. to a woman named Danielle Clayton with the words, I love you on a frequent basis? I send many of my friends that text. But and on a frequent asking basis, about yeah. this specific person. Especially, especially the ones I was banging. A frequent basis, yeah. <laughs> And Ms. Klus Mr. Klusterman, is Danielle Clayton one of the people, I believe the term you used was friends 
that you referenced <laughs> in terms of your addiction text message. Yes, Ms. Clayton is one of my close friends. And do you admit today that you're having an emotional affair with Ms. Clayton? Objection relevancy? I mean, the parties have been separated for months and I, I'm just with objection relevancy. Your Honor, I think it goes to, he says he's not romantically involved with someone. And oh my God. Actions. Actually, like the question I asked him was romantically involved with someone that he's interfacing with the children. And his answer was no. I don't think your question had the connotation interfacing. Again, her testimony is that she did uh, favors with his friends to get a dog during the marriage. And now we're going to clutch our pearls about him going out with somebody after it's over. You got to be kidding me. With the children attached to it. It, it, it did. But um, again, it, the issue is the kids. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would only allow it to the extent that if you're building foundation to asking about whether it affects his ability to parent. That's all. Understood, Your Honor. I'll withdraw it. Mr. Klusman, on September 16th, 2023, did you allow Danielle Clayton to take two of your children to Grand Rapids for the whole day? Sure did. So you involve this person in your parenting time, correct? They're, the Clayton's two daughters are close friends with our two daughters. I'm not asking about their daughters, Same. though. I'm asking about this person. I'm not going to let them go to Grand Rapids without an adult. Why didn't you take them to Grand Rapids? Because they got invited by their friends. And Ms. Kluster, Mr. Klusman, you testified earlier today that one of the only reasons you would miss the children's games was for work. Is that correct? I, I don't know. I don't miss. I said I don't miss games for work. Okay. So you, you wouldn't miss the children's games if you were able to go. I always make sure I can be there when it's feasible. And yet on July 10th, 2023, you skipped one of your children's games to go to Mackinac Island with Danielle Clayton. Is that correct? Uh, no, I don't believe that to be correct. You were not on Mackinac Island on July 10th, 2023. I don't recall. And try not to involve the children in adult conversations. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, you took it upon yourself to tell the children that you and the plaintiff were getting a divorce without Ms. Klusterman present. Is that correct? Uh, they were witnesses. Yes or no uh, answer. I, I, then I don't recall. So you're telling me you don't recall taking the children to Culver's and telling them all at a table at Culver's that you and Ms. Klusterman were getting divorced without her present. That's just not uh, in your memory. I don't know if I used the word divorce, but yeah, I, I do recall him. Okay, so now you remember after I... Well, I mean, they saw me visibly upset, yes. And you're aware that Ms. Klusterman asked you to wait so you guys could tell them together? Uh, I don't recall her asking me that now. Okay. And Mr. Klusman, you brought up an incident that occurred in December of 2022 between you and Ms. Klusterman. Is that correct? The Christmas Eve incident? Yep. Yes. So your version of that event left out some details. Fair, fair statement? No. Isn't it true that you called Ms. Klusterman an effing C word before the incident? No. Isn't it true that you spit in her face? before this incident? Uh, absolutely not. I would never do that. And Mr. Klusterman, you testified today that Jen's the teacher, school is her world, and that you follow her direction in this area. Is that correct? Absolutely. So it would be appropriate for the children to live primarily with Ms. Klusterman during the school year, would it not? Absolutely not. Mr. Klusterman, you testified that you believe the plaintiff and her family are trying to bribe the children. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Didn't you recently promise your 15-year-old son a brand new Tacoma for his 16th birthday? No. And didn't you recently buy your daughter a $220 coat? I believe that she deserves to be warm in the winter months. Would it be fair to say that the coat and 
potent in that regard. It's kind of like you calling the pot black, pot and kettle situation. You say Jen's family's doing that the bribing. Awkward. You're buying expensive <laughs> gifts. Uh, wasn't the, it black. was it was actually I was expecting Jen to pay half, so then it would be the same thing as far as Jen. But you never asked her to pay half before you purchased it. She agreed to pay half. She but never you, gave me. You a, she never gave you me. Never a, asked her. She never gave me a. She agreed to pay for half the coat. We never agreed on a price. Well, do you see how that could be problematic if you went out yeah. and purchased? <laughs> okay. This we, this we, you testified we, earlier. We oh, you're, you're good. Hang on. Okay. One yes. question, okay. answer. If he's answering, please don't interrupt him. If she's asking a question, please yeah. do not keep talking. Well, he's not answering my questions. He's elaborating, and it's a yes or no answer. So that's why I am interrupting him. I, I'm not giving that instruction, Ms. Schmelzer is. I'm not sure why she's giving that instruction. Because I'm I'm asking my client. So please you know, answer the question that's asked. But if Ms. Lentz wants him to elaborate, asking. he can. If she doesn't, then you can follow up on redirect. So I disagree with the instruction you gave your client. It was just I, not to interrupt him. I was asking my client to please stop talking over opposing yeah, counsel. I, 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 that was a direction to my client. All right, Ms. Kluster, Mr. Klusterman, you testified earlier today that you never say bad things in about the plaintiff in front of the children. That's not true, is it? I don't know. It is true. Isn't it true that you called the plaintiff a liar in front of the children? Uh, I don't recall. I mean. And you asked her to take a psych evaluation in front of the children, didn't you? No, I don't believe that was not in front of the children. I would not do that. Did you call her a whack job in front of the children? No, I would not do have that conversation in front of the children. And Mr. Klusterman, in October, we watched a video, Plaintiff's Exhibit 14. It's already been admitted into evidence, um, and so I won't play it again now. But during that video, you call the plaintiff crazy and that she sucks, and there's children present in the area. So is it still your testimony that you never talk bad about the plaintiff in front of the kids? Um, I mean, I, they could be in the area, but I, if, I doubt they heard. They were close enough to hear. Okay, so you just possible. talk negatively it's about possible. the plaintiff. I'm sorry, what did you say? You're fine. Andy, my Mr. Klusterman, you testified earlier about a softball game that Ms. Klusterman said something inappropriate to your mom. Is that, do you recall that? Absolutely. And your mom was sitting with someone, is that correct? Absolutely. That person was this Danielle Clayton we just talked about, is that correct? That is correct. And you testified earlier about some incident in Florida that happened at a pool table where Ms. Klusterman said something inappropriate. Do you recall that? Yes. Isn't it true that statement was made after you kissed another woman on the trip? That never happened. And Ms. Klus Mr. Klusterman, when you were questioned about Factor K domestic violence, you said that you try to stay calm and leave the situation. That's your MO, is that correct? Absolutely. And again, I'm I'm having an issue. We've watched several videos now where you're screaming. So do you only scream at the kids and you stay calm with Miss Klusterman? Is that how it goes? No, that's not true. Mr. Klusterman, I want to understand your earlier testimony correctly. You think it's funny to respond to a health concern of one of your minor children conveyed by the plaintiff to you with the message as soon as you deep throat me. That was your testimony earlier? Yes. Funny. Okay. And you testified earlier that you never condition things for the children on sexual favors. Is that correct? I never condition? Um, like, for example, and I, this is a hypothetical. This is not if the children needed food. You never say, oh, Miss Fisherman, <laughs> you have to give me a sexual favor in order to get that for the kids. No. Oh, okay, so what Jesus. about this Lake Ann situation that we saw? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 we need to do it or the kids starve. Come on, is anybody buying this? In an earlier exhibit where Miss Klusterman is asking you for money to put the kids to Lake Ann camp and you're requesting sexual favors. Okay. Are we looking at a specific exhibit? I'm looking at exhibit 32. I may have a moment, please. Okay. Leave Lake Ann alone. It's sleepy out there. 
Um, I'm going to eject that question. There is no sexual favor requested in this exhibit. That's fine, Your Honor. I'll withdraw my question. Yeah. Mr. Kusman, looking at Exhibit 32, I don't know if you have it in front of you. You text the plaintiff, what do I get if I pay for Lake Ann and buy you sandals? She doesn't respond, so you say, guess nothing. She doesn't respond, so you give a thumbs up, and you text her again. What are you trying to get here? What do I get if I pay for Lake Ann and sandals? Uh, some attention from Jen, some alone time with Jen. Okay, so then you follow up with anything on the table. Same answer, alone time, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, I, I mean, I love spending time with Jen. All right, so let's keep going. At 2.17, you say nothing, question mark. Again, she's not responding. 2.17 p.m., you say, like, see your boobs or something. All right, so are we saying that you never, you never condition anything for the kids on getting a sexual picture from Ms. Klusterman, nothing like that? Um, yeah, I, I don't think that includes, involves the kids. I mean, it's mostly play. I, okay, I never, so Lake, Lake if, Ann, that was for the children, right? If oh. Jen were to say no, it's not like I would say, okay, he can't go. Okay, never but the conversation you're that. having there is Lake Ann is for the children and she's trying to get the children enrolled in Lake Ann, is it not? Yeah, but I, again, okay. it's, it's yeah, fine. Okay. Fine. Mr. Klusman, earlier you were asked about hockey and kind of like a bad language locker room talk situation. Do you recall that testimony? Yep, I do. And during that you admitted to calling Calvin an ass, is that correct? Um, I think that actually was to Jen and not to Colin in a text. <laughs> okay, so you're changing your earlier testimony? Well. Are we talking about a specific exhibit? Um, yes, if you give me an, one moment to locate it, please. I thought we were also talking about his testimony from today. I thought he had testified that he did call the child that, um, which is what I was referring to, but it appears now we're switching our story a little bit, so. Well, I I mean, I recall that I was questioning him about a yes. specific exhibit, so if we can point to that exhibit, we can talk about it. April's got the whole thing I on her channel. for the reference. Okay, I think it's exhibit 55. I appreciate everyone's patience. Okay, so I'm looking at exhibit 55, Mr. Klusterman. Again, I'm talking about your testimony from earlier in regard to this. Ms. Klusterman writes to you, we will have a chat tomorrow, still not worth calling him an ass. And you testified earlier that you did call Calvin an ass. Is that, does that refresh your memory? Oh, I'm not seeing where, where that is. I'm on page two of exhibit 55. February 28, 2023, or sorry, page, yeah, page two. Oh, I, I, okay, I, I see. I'm not sure if that was, uh, Jen. I'm not sure if I called him and asked to him or to Jen. I, I don't recall that conversation. Okay. When we asked you about this earlier, or when you well, were I mean, asked- Okay, so when you were asked about this earlier by your own attorney, you kind of negated responsibility by saying Miss Klusterman also swears around the kids. Is that correct? That is correct. Do you think there's a difference between using a swear word in the presence of children and calling your child an ass? You think those are two different things? Um, I think any time they're used is wrong. And Mr. Klusterman, you testified earlier that the plaintiff is very bad with money. Do you recall saying that? Absolutely. Yet for years, you let the plaintiff run the books for Klusterman Outdoor Services. Did you not? Uh, I, I wouldn't call what we did running the books, no. 
Okay, so for years, you let Ms. Glusserman have access to the KOS bank account, correct? Absolutely. absolutely. In fact, until these proceedings started, you didn't even know the login information for that bank account, did you? Um, I... Probably not, no. Okay, so someone that's super bad with money, you're just letting her have unbridled access to this account, correct? She's my wife, that's our money. Mr. Klusman, throughout this case, you've taken a lot of issue with like the date on some, some of plaintiff's exhibits. Like there's been questions like, oh, is it strange that she's bringing this up from 2015, 2014, correct? You've recalled that? Yes. Yeah, the exhibit that you just had admitted, Defendant's Exhibit A, contains various pictures dating all the way back to 2009, correct? Okay. Okay, so is your position that this court should disregard plaintiff's exhibits that date back years, but consider your exhibits that date back years? I think pictures of my kids. Oh my God, that is so freaking stupid. I don't even know where to begin. For a closing on this thing, he they do a little slideshow. Here's me being a good dad throughout their lives. What he's taking exception with is she's not saying anything. She's saying he does all these horrible things, but she he she doesn't bring it up for, until five years later. That that is completely different. It's obvious to everyone involved. It's insulting to the judge. It's insulting to me. It's insulting to everybody. Kids and I are different than texts, but okay. I, so you're making a distinction there. Time. And Ms. Mr. Klusman, isn't it true that plaintiff took 19 of the 25 pictures displayed in your exhibit? Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't take them myself. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> so in all those 19 incidences, the plaintiff was also present with the children. Yeah, she's my wife. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Schmelzer, do you have any redirect? You get yes. zero points. I just want to finish up my note here. Um, Dad wins. Maintain the temporary. Going back to the top deal. here. Next. Um, I'll take that back from you. So I don't. Fifty fifty. My place with these. Um, so you were asked about attending uh, a Zoom conference. For your child one time was that the only school conference you ever attended one ever entirely for three children in 15 years i highly doubt it um, have you attended other conferences meetings for sports uh extracurriculars well i have let me tell you and one is too many school medical appointments <laughs> have there just been a lot over the years there is a lot when there's three children yes um You were asked about attending the parent-teacher conferences for Kelsey and Kelvin this last fall. Why didn't you attend those? Um, I, I don't. I mean, for starters, I don't really want to be anywhere near Jen, so I'm not going to attend anything that she's attending where I have to be somewhat close to her. Um, at this point, we are not there. I hope we get to that point. Um, I really do. Um, but again, if there's not an issue with what's going on at school, when I see report cards of getting A's, I don't necessarily think that I need to go to a conference um, when the kids are doing other things and you have to get them to other events. Um, if, if there was a problem at school, I would absolutely be part of that. Um, I kind of want to explore because it was touched on with the PPO issue that you, you can attend, um, I mean, there's no PPO now, but when it was in place that you understood at a point in time, you could attend public events. Um, and you just testified that you didn't go to the parent-teacher conferences in part because Ms. Klusterman was there. Let, can we explore that a little bit? Why are you so concerned about being in Ms. Klusterman's presence? Because she scares me. Um... I feel like during this divorce, she has proven that she will do whatever it takes to get her way. 
um, and that concerns me. Um, and I just don't want to put myself in a situation where she can accuse me of anything. Yep. Uh, I mean, she filed a PPO against you. She made a police report. She made a CPS. Well, she didn't make a CPS report, but she did report allegations to CPS when given the opportunity, right? Correct. Is is that your concern? Is if you're in her physical presence, she could say anything? Yes. Oh. Um, did you feel that some of these allegations that have been lodged against you over the last few months are untrue? They're all untrue. Um, police never charged you with anything. No, the police never charged me. CPS didn't substantiate anything. No. And she's repeating the same allegations. Okay. Correct. Um, do you wish it was that way? Uh, no, I... Do you wish you could feel free to attend to your children's appointments and events without a concern about what Ms. Klusterman may accuse you of? Yeah, I, uh, I, I do want to have a friendship with her. She's, she's made it where I, I just don't trust her and I, I don't want to be anywhere near her. Um, that's really unfortunate for your kids, isn't it? Oh God. Yeah, and they and and they know it. And that's that's even worse. Now he's gonna start crying. Uh, I don't fully know why this was brought up, but um I'm just gonna ask some clarifying questions here about your job at UPS. When did when did that terminate? Um I mean, it's probably been 12, 15 years. And at the time you were working that job, um, you were working that job when you and Miss Klusterman got married, right? I was. At, I worked there for uh, in the middle of the night for um, health care. So once you got married, it, it wasn't really necessary that you worked there for health care. Right. Um, yeah. It became a lot working all day and then starting work at the early morning hours. And um, they terminated me for being late a number of times. Okay. Were you terminated for like inappropriate behavior or conduct or anything like that? No, it was just being late, late to work. I started at like three in the morning, four in the morning. Um, and at that point in time, did you and Ms. Klusterman work together to determine you know, what's the best for our family at this point as far as your employment? Yes, and we actually at the time both agreed that it was uh, time for that to be over with anyway. Uh, with respect to, there were some questions about, you know, snow plowing in the winter time, And as we had the example today, we got kind of a big medium size, I don't know what you want to call it. We got a snowstorm that required uh, plowing over last night and this morning. Um, are the kids in your care this week? They are not. So you didn't have to deal with child care? No. Okay. Um, do you have a plan in place that if there is a snowstorm and you do have to work before they go to school, how you're gonna handle that? Uh, yes, um, my mom or dad will come stay. Um, and uh, I'll be uh, fully transparent here. I hope to get to the point with Jen that we can have that relationship where if it's my parenting time, if I have to work, the kids can go with her for one night or, or whatever. I mean, I, I want to be friends with her. I don't, I don't want to have to stick with that schedule. If there's an event, say it's my week and there's a music concert, she wants to take the kids to that. I, I want that relationship with her. Um, so I, I hope we get to the point like, hey, it's going to snow tonight. Could the kids sleep at your place? I, I want that to be an option. Um, Jen got in a car accident a couple days ago. I helped out and brought Callie to school yesterday. I appreciated Jen asking me. Um, but yes, the plan is for my mom at this point, because Jen and I don't have that relationship. The plan is for my mom to come stay at the house or and uh, be with the kids and why those five or six hours that I'm gone. 
And is that job necessary to provide the financial means to provide your children with food, clothing, a home? It absolutely is. I do whatever it takes to make things happen for my kids. Is that any different than she has a job to go to? It's not any different. When, uh, Jen actually leaves for work at 7.15. Calvin's home till 8. Kelsey's home alone every day during Jen's parenting time from 8 till about 8.40 until my uh, former brother-in-law comes and picks her up and takes her to school. So the kids are alone under Jen's watch. Um, prior to the temporary order, were, there was a time you were not living in the home, correct? Correct. Were you still coming to the house to take your daughter to school in the morning every day? Yes, every day I would uh, come and pick up Callie to take her to East Middle School. And then I would come back and be with Kelsey until nine o'clock when she went. And, and again, I hope we get to that point where I can be there for that hour when Jen can't be. And when I can't be somewhere, I, I want Jen to be that person. I, I want to have that relationship. And because you were kind of doing that at the beginning when you were first separated, where you would come over to the marital home um, and pick up your daughter and take her to school, is that reflected in the temporary order that was issued in this matter, do you recall? I don't recall. If it is reflected in there, is that because you and probably Ms. Clues Rimble shared with the front of the court? Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, and, and since that's in there, um, that says that you are permitted to be able to take the kids to school in the morning. Has Ms. Klusterman offered that to you this school year yet on her on her weeks? Um, I mean, Kelvin walks. Uh, she has not offered it with Kelsey. Uh, Callie, she's needed help a couple of times, but uh, I think most of the time Jen takes Callie on her way to work. But no, as far as uh, Kelsey, she has not offered that um, as far as I can. And you were, you were asked about in August of this last year, 2023, in, in this last summer, there was something about an eye appointment um, and a little bit of confusion about that. What happened with that appointment? Um, Jen let me know that there was an appointment. Um, I... I think there was a scheduling conflict. Um, I called the uh, doctor's office and they informed me that I actually had the date wrong and it was going to be the following. I know what it was. Jen had an appointment at the same time. Jen asked if she could take Callie. Um, I think we had something up. I called the doctor's office and they said, well, actually, that's not the date and time of appointment. It was the next week. And I let Jen know that the appointment was during her time and not what we thought it was originally. Did you fail to take your daughter to a medical appointment that was scheduled during your time? No, no, I, I actually called him. We, we had gotten the date wrong and it was during Jen's time that her appointment was scheduled. To the extent that you did not reschedule the appointment, like it was, it was phrased, why would you not reschedule the appointment? I'm not going to reschedule an appointment when it's during Jen's time. I mean, if Jen needed me to reschedule it, but it was during her time in the summertime when she was home, she was able to make it. I'm assuming she was able to make it work, but I'm not going to reschedule appointments during Jen's time. And was she the one who made the original appointment, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, she was. I mean, you didn't schedule I mean, that appointment originally. No, but I mean, those are made a long time in advance, so. Um, are you incapable of taking your children to medical appointments? No, I absolutely uh, will take them. And I, I, I took them this August to get their physicals done and their, their well child checkups. And um, I actually in, enjoy doing it. It's not, and it may have been during our marriage where Jen did those things. It was never that I didn't want to or incapable. I mean, I actually, I actually enjoy doing those things with the kids and being a part of that and, and making it happen. I, I've enjoyed um, the, uh, increased role I, I guess that we're each having and being involved in different ways that we have haven't been and um, but no I'm absolutely capable and willing and all about um, getting them to where they need to be. Has I mean has this separation living separately from Miss Lucerne has it sort of changed a little bit the roles each of you have taken on with the kids? Absolutely. Are there, sure for both of us. Are there things that you've observed that Miss Clusterman did not traditionally do during the marriage that you did that she's now doing? Yes. Like what? 
she's having to mow the yard. Uh, I mean, for the children. Um, yeah, I mean, she's obviously responsible for all activities when it's her parenting time, uh, as, as am I, but it's a lot getting all three to where they need to be. I'm sure she would admit it's a lot and, and crazy, but maybe, you know, um, I'm sure she's capable, as am I. Um, but yeah, our roles have uh, increased in things that we've got to do. Um, I think we both have people that are willing to help us when we need it. Um, but yeah, things that, things have changed. It's it's a lot. There's no doubt about it, but I, I love it. Um, speaking of, of help, I mean, there was a question about your mother transporting one of your children to an event instead of you. Why were you not transporting her yourself? Um, I mean, if Kelly's got to be to an event an hour early, um, it's most likely that I would stay working for that hour and then just show up for her game. Um, I, I try to use my time wisely um, to get things that I've done. So after the game, I don't have to go back to work or I can do things with her. Um, I've changed my work schedule a lot to be there for the kids. Um, did your parents assist during the marriage sometimes with, with transportation or child always, care? Always. They were always in communication with Jen, helping Jen out as much as possible. They've they've never said no to helping us in any way. So is it unusual now that you're separated that your parents are doing some of the transportation to help? No, they always have. Always have. Um, there was a question about the body positivity and whether that's important. Um, and the question referenced the video, quote, put your clothes on, nobody should see that. Is that the video um, that we saw that we had to go off the YouTube uh, streaming to view? Is that the video that I you believe, made that I believe it is, yes. Okay. And during your direct exam testimony, was it your testimony that the children were not in the room when that video was recorded. Yes. And it's true that we don't see a child appear in that video, nor do we hear any children's voices in that video. Right. Do you believe it's a fair characterization with all of that, that you said that to Miss Klusterman in front of the children and that affected the children? I do not believe the children were there when I said that. Um, what goes on between you and Miss Klusterman personally that the children don't see? Sometimes isn't pretty, as all human relationships are. Um, but would you say something like that in front of your daughters? No, no. I try to be positive with the girls and uh, make sure they have the most confidence in themselves, and even Kelvin for that matter. Um, I want them to think the world of themselves, um, not worry about what other people think, um, as far as like what they're wearing or anything like that. I, I don't want. The kids to have a bad image of themselves. Um, I uh, try to be positive with them in everything that they do, and, and uh, make sure that they know they are loved and and all of that good stuff. Um, you were asked about parental controls on Calvin's phone. There was a discussion that Miss Klusterman put those parental controls on the phone. Yeah, she did. She's in charge of it, but we've had conversations. She includes me in those conversations about um, timing. Um, I wish they were a little more strict, um, but Jen has just been in charge of the technology stuff, in charge of the kids' phones. She's in control of the two girls' phones, so I wouldn't have any power over that. I actually do hope to take over control of Calvin's phone, and I will lock it down even more than what it is now because I think it's an issue. Um, not things that he's looking at or anything like that. I just think it's too much of a time thing for him. Um, so um, that's actually going to be something that I will be talking to Jen about because um, I would like control of it. it. His phone is on my plan, but I'm not taking restrictions off. I'm going to tighten him down to where that thing pretty much is shut off at like 10 o'clock at night till 7 in the morning. I mean, um, is it fair to say that once parental controls are placed on a phone you can't somebody else can't then go place the same controls on right no it's, like it's, it's done once yeah it's done once yeah um and is that because miss Klusterman took it upon herself to do that yes and then she informed you yeah um 
And at that point, you just, you didn't protest, <clears throat> but you weren't able to go put parental controls on yourself. Well, right. When Kelman got his phone, I mean, we were, we were married, happily married. Uh, I had no issue with her taking initiative on that. Outside of the context of actual controls placed on a technological uh, device, do you have rules in your home about how your children are to use technology? Absolutely. <clears throat> what are those rules? Um, I am constantly asking them to put them away. Um, it, it's, it's a struggle with Kelvin because he does use it as an alarm clock. Um, I do, I, the, this last week that the kids were with me, I was taking the phones. Uh, when they went to bed and uh, setting them in the kitchen um, just because they are making they're getting notifications at all hours of the day um, I, I don't like that um, we've gone places I've had the kids all three of them leave their phones at my parents so they're not um, accessing them the, the girls have gone to friends' houses of my cousins. Uh, she's taken the phones while the kids are there so that the, they're not just on the phones and, and her kids are doing the same thing. Um, so I'm very much in control of what's going on. Um, so is it fair to say that you parent and establish boundaries with your children? Very much so. Um, I'm, I actually feel like I'm more strict on that with Jen. Um, I even brought up on the wizard. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. I even brought up on the wizard that I was frustrated with notifications and TikTok and Snapchat at all hours. Jen said she would look into it. It doesn't appear anything has changed as far as that. Um, hopefully, that's something we can still change and look into. I'm not. I'm not blaming Jen. Um, um, I, I, I want. Those are things I want to work together on. Um, it's been a fair characterization, as Ms. Klusterman's attorney put it, that Jen just does everything. Ms. Klusterman does everything for the kids. That's why she put the parental controls on. Is that fair characterization? I, mean, I think that's what they're trying to paint. That's the picture they're trying to paint. But I'm asking for your opinion. That is, I mean, it's not true. I mean, that's, but that's what they're trying to do. You're very involved in my I children. am very involved in my children's lives. Uh, and that sort of leads me to, there was that question about um, the dates of Ms. Klusterman's exhibits versus the dates of your exhibits and, and why that's different. Um, if we can inspect that a little bit more, the exhibits that Ms. Klusterman presented that you had concern with the dates being 2018, 19, even back to 2015, I mean, eight years ago, what were those exhibits portraying? I believe that she's trying to portray that I'm not a good dad, I'm not a good husband, whatever. And, and basically concerns that she had about your ability to parent your children. Right. And within the context of, I have a concern about parenting that's so important that I need to tell the court about it. Why is the date relevant in your opinion? Well, I mean, we've had issues. Some of those dates are before other issues we've had and they were never brought up then. Is, is, there, is there something here that if, do you believe that if Ms. Klusterman was so concerned in 2015 or 2018 that it's reasonable that she would have a safety concern back six eight years ago but just be bringing it up now uh, i think if she had a real concern she would have done something then um and is it your testimony that she didn't back then? she definitely did not um i mean there were a lot of times i I mean, I went to Florida with Callie. I went away with Callie to hockey events. Nothing was ever said, or you shouldn't be in this situation. I mean, it was it was nothing. It was nothing. I... Now, as far as the dates go with respect to the pictures you presented, 
what were you trying to convey to the court with those pictures that you presented? That I'm very active and caring and a loving dad, uh, that my kids are a huge part of my life. Um, I want to show that I love my kids more than anything in this world and they are my focus. They always will be. I love them more than anything. I will do anything for them. Um, they come first in everything I do. Do you, do you see that showing a long history of being present and involved in your children's activities is different than somebody saying, I have a concern of safety for my children eight years ago that I'm just now bringing up. Is that different to you? Yeah, it's different, yes. Very different. Um, the question was posed, you know, a lot of those pictures were where the image was captured by Ms. Boosterman. Is that because you guys are doing stuff as a family? Yeah, we, we always did stuff as a family. So she was there, you were there, you guys were doing stuff with your kids together, yeah. both of you. Yeah. Um, I want to go back here a little bit and ask about the questions that were asked about, um, you know, the PPO being served on you. There were some questions about when your mom and sister went to pick up your kids for parenting time. In your recollection, was that before or after you were served with the PPO? That was before I was served with the PPO. Things were stressful with Jen, but it was between Jen and I, and my mom went, which is not uncommon. But my family's always been involved. Um, but that was before the PPO. And your mom and sister returned to you without the children. Correct. Um, so the question, did you forfeit your parenting time? You answered yes, but was did you really understand that question? Well, I mean, I, I forfeited it because I was told I had to until I got guidance from you. And it was, that was a stressful. Well, let's back up here. What does forfeit mean to you? Forfeit means I chose to not take them. And that is not what happened. Okay. What did happen? Uh, Jen refused to give them to us. To your mom and sister? Yes who arrived before, or who you at least sent over there prior to you having knowledge of being served with this PPO. Correct. Um, they returned back to you with no children. Correct. And then you got served with the PPO? Yes. And at that point, you had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. And the dates of that, and I think that's already in the record, um, that was 4th of July weekend, right? Correct. Um, Do you believe that you voluntarily forfeited parenting time that weekend? I definitely did not voluntarily uh, forfeit uh, Cherry Festival. Was that the first Cherry Festival you'd ever missed with your kids? It was. Was that the first 4th of July you'd ever missed with your kids? It, it was. Was that the first time you ever missed seeing an air show in a year with your kids? Yeah, we had, we had always always done the air shows together as a family. Um, your testimony was you didn't really know what our family wizard was when you read it on the PPO paperwork, correct? Correct. Um, we heard testimony that Ms. Kusterman actually had somebody come from her attorney's office to help her download our family wizard onto her phone. Correct. Um, did you have that opportunity um, when you were served with the PPO over 4th of July weekend? I did not. Um, as soon as business reopened, you took care of the Our Family Wizard issue, right? Correct. Um, there's a lot of questions about the police looking for you. When you finally connected with the police, that was for service of the PPO, right? Yes. It was It was not, you were being looked for as if you were a criminal of some sort, right? I was not being looked for. Okay. Um, and you did connect with a police officer and he handed you the PPO and you accepted that? 
was a totally uh, yes you know calm exchange yeah i had uh woken up to a um or, or no they called they called me and i answered the phone and they asked if they could come to the house and have me sign something and that's what happened and you fully cooperated oh absolutely um There was a lot of discussion about this coat that you purchased for your daughter recently. Um, was there some discussion between you and Ms. Kusterman about purchasing a coat prior to you actually purchasing this coat? Yes, we had agreed um, to split the cost of a coat. We never talked money. Um, Kelsey's our kid that uh, um, she, she rarely gets new stuff. She doesn't, she doesn't play hockey. She gets a lot of hand-me-downs. Um, she loves to ski. I, I wanted her warm. Jen and I had agreed to split the cost of the coat. We never, no, we didn't talk about what that amount would be. Um, we spend thousands of dollars on hockey sticks and skates. I feel like it's justified to buy my daughter a two hundred and twenty, two hundred forty dollars, whatever it was, the tax coat to stay warm skiing. How much they are? When uh, we had I don't literally get... a week before spent eight hundred dollars on hockey skates and four hundred dollars uh, on. So actually, spent like seven hundred dollars on two hockey sticks. I think it's fair to give uh, my daughter a two hundred and some dollar coat and not think it's a big deal about splitting the cost. Prior to this coat discussion, has yeah. there been a lot of expenses over this course of this separation and temporary order in place for the children that there has been ongoing discussion about splitting? Yeah, we've agreed to split the stuff. Sometimes uh, we argue about it. Um, we've agreed to I thought we had agreed to share hockey costs. That's not working out that way. Jen has stuck me with. It's interesting that she only brought up the coat, but didn't bring up the hockey equipment. I spent probably twelve hundred dollars, a thousand between a thousand twelve hundred dollars on hockey equipment a month ago, three weeks ago. That Jen and I had agreed to split all hockey costs. She has denied or she has refused to pay me that. Um, and she agreed to pay that. She agreed to pay for the coat. She has not done that. Um, has she purchased things for the kids without garnering your agreement ahead of time and then just said, hey, here's the amount of money you owe me? Yes, she has. And uh, I uh, pay for those things and split. And I, I don't want to fight with her. I want to do what's best for the kids. I feel like Jen's taking advantage of that because she knows that I'll do the right thing and get the kids the things that they need. Um, yeah, $240 is a lot for a coat. I want Kelsey warm. Kelsey deserves nice things like the other two. Um, and you mentioned skiing. I mean, you're outside for long periods of time in the cold skiing. Yes, and she froze last year. Um, and I, I want her to have nice things and she deserves a expensive coat. Um, when Ms. Kusterman refused to contribute half after you purchased it, after she said she would contribute half, did you take the coat away from her? Did you, I mean, did you return it? No, I did not return it. So what was the dispute? What was going on with respect to the request to send it over to Miss Kusterman's house or the old coat? Um, I'm not sure why Jen wanted the old coat. I assumed it was so she could sell it. Um, 
Did she initially tell you it was for something else that she wanted it? She initially told me that it was for Gracie. And then I said, well, I can just give it to Gracie. And she said, no, you will give me that coat tonight. Um, and we and we gave it to her. And we ended up sending Kelsey's new coat over. Kelsey, um, I, I can't say what she said. Um, Kelsey had no problem with the coat staying at the house. It had nothing to do with Jen not. And absolutely nothing to do with Jen not paying a half. That was right away. That was really before I, Jen and I started to argue about the cost of that stuff, about the cost of the coat. Um, and we and we sent the coat over. At that point, it wasn't even cold. Kelsey wasn't needing a coat and, and just likes to wear sweatshirts. She's not always a big fan of wearing a coat. But I'm not holding anything against Jen or playing the game. That was never my intention. Is it frustrating that it's turned into this big deal to buy your child a winter coat? Yeah, it's a real pain. I don't want it like this for the next eight years. Um, I Has Ms. Klusterman also made other demands for money towards you? She has. Oh. Other other stuff for the kids. And I use the word demand specifically. What is she saying? How what is the context of the things she's saying? Um, she gives me a lot of attitude. Um, she's uh is telling me I have to pay half. Um, um it, it's just I'm just tired of the fighting, tired of the games. I, I just want to get along. And I'm really hopeful that this stuff stops and we can move forward together. Um, it, it, this, is, this is just not fun. Um, we're, I, I understand if Jen doesn't have a ton of money right now for paying these things, but then don't, this is why I, said that maybe the kids shouldn't play hockey and you know and because it, it's expensive we're both spending a lot of money to do what we're doing with the divorce and um but we agreed to pay 50 50 and it's just like it's a it's a it's a game um, um it's, it's just getting old and i want to move forward where we just do things for the kids together and make things the best for the kids and get the kids the things that they always need and want. And I I want to get to the point where I can buy a coat and not have to ask Jen for half. And Jen buys something and she doesn't ask me for half. And it's just about the kids. And um because I, I I don't I don't want to have to ask Jen for money. I that, that's not that's not fun. And you, um, I, I, I need to ask about the coat. Did your daughter need a, a winter coat? She needed a coat, yes. Her old coat was too small. Um, and you provided her what she needed? Yes, we went to a number of stores and I let her choose the one that she liked and she was super excited about it and uh, I was excited about it and I had I had let Jen know the where we were going and different stores that we were going to try and check there and I would keep her posted and she said she would pay for half at no point did she say this is my budget um, uh, we, we that's not a conversation we really had over the years we just get we do what we need to do to get the kids the things that they need. Yeah, it's an expensive coat, but it'll last her a couple of years. Not really. And again, I, I want her to reasonable. have nice things for the sport that she loves to do. And I, I have a problem with spending so much on like hockey skates and she gets a cheap coat to save 50 bucks. No, I, I want her to have the coat that she wanted and that she picked out. Um, but I want her to be excited about it. She was super excited about it. I'm sure Jen would agree that she saw that out of her too. Um, 
Oh, I want to switch gonna gears here. I'm, I'm going to interrupt real quick. You can hear me, correct? Yes. Because I can hear everyone. The uh, computer screen is frozen, so I'm going to, uh, the recording's still going and everything. I'm going to restart. We'll take about a five minute break. I'll figure this out and we'll be right with you, okay? Thank you. Thanks. Do we leave? Oh, I wanted a hot mic. I was hoping for a hot mic situation. Good Lord, a $220 coat is on the low end of a winter coat. If you live uh, in the north at all, you know this. That's that's not particularly expensive. If you're really, really having a hard time getting by, I guess you could get something used or something. But, I, I mean, that that's the extreme you'd have to go to to get significantly under that. It's so weird. But I, I guess the, the attorney was trying to get the point that she's petty as hell and and that's working. I think she took too long with it. I don't know. I don't know. Is is are, are we going to is he going to come back on this or are we going to have a whole different stream now? Let me see here. Elena. Yeah, I feel sorry for this guy. I do. He's not perfect, but he's he's a good dad. He's saying all the stuff. I've been through it. He's not making it up. The, the phones and all that stuff. He's trying to be a good father to these kids. The, their relationship is soured. They're they're mean to each other. Like literally everybody gets married. Uh, but he's not any more mean to her than she is to him. So the, they say they they fight. Okay. But but he he tries to help the kids. And then at the end of all this he's like I, I want half custody. He isn't saying like oh I want to cut her out of the of everything. I, I want half custody. So I'm I'm absolutely curious as to what she's going to ask for. Because I don't see why how you don't just agree to that. They live in the same town. The kids get along with each with each of them. What what more do you want? I don't know. Or is this leverage? On, I, I don't I don't do family law. People are asking me family law questions. I don't do it. People ask me if this is normal. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Someone said in the chat, and it was a good question. Is this normal for family law? Well, you know, like Rob at Law and Lumber would be a better person to ask. Now Debbie Davis would know more. They've been on some family law stuff with me. But it, literally, if you look at this marriage in my life experience, not law experience, you know what this marriage is? Better than average. That's what this marriage is. That's 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 where we are, people. I hate to say it, but that's that's the truth. That is the truth. This guy is too nice. He wanted to preserve his family. He's too nice. Uh, after he was wise to stay away from her, he tried. She tried to get him put in jail on trumped up child abuse charges. I don't know how he can. I know he's trying to like be moderate for a hearing, and that's probably good. And his attorney probably told him to do that. But I, I, I wouldn't have a nice thing to say. If I were in that circumstance, I just wouldn't because that, that's what's going on here. And then, and then her attorney, oh my God, that they, they were making me, this body positivity thing still, it still just chaps my behind. I can't take it. Ah, good point. Good point. That is an excellent point. She's kind of, uh, she's kind of in a right. If you believed, if you believed the CSC allegations, you you have to ask for more than fifty fifty. Yeah, you're kind of wedged in there. I don't know. I, I have no idea how this works. My, my my prediction, and I and I know nothing. I don't practice family law. My prediction is the judge is going to say keep the, 
is going to do what the father wants, which is reasonable. Not, the father isn't asking to, you know, for crazy stuff. He's saying, let's just, just keep it the way it was in the temporary order. So we each have 50% custody. I, 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 I think the judge is going to go that way. Not because, not because that's what the dad wants, but, but, but because that's just a, a very rational solution to this scenario. The most rational one I can think of. So there, there we have it. All right. I'll put this up here when they come back on. Hopefully, we, we might even get a ruling today. Who knows? April Searing did a whole bunch of this hearing. I keep seeing people in the chat saying April already did this. Well, she, she did a bunch of the prior hearing, which is cool, but like th this is live. <laughs> she might be currently doing it. I don't know. She was in here earlier, so I don't think so. But she didn't do this hearing. She did the... I mean, it's it's the same case, but she didn't do today's hearing yet that I'm aware of. But if you want background, you can go back and, and see all that. There's 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 a lot of water under the bridge here. All right, there we go. I will. I I'm not going anywhere. I will come right back on as soon as they come back on. They're back. They're back where? Does is it a different stream? Or do I have this on pause? How'd you guys know they were back? Okay. Uh, did, are we ready to continue? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Great. Uh, just for my purposes, we're back on the record on case number 231743DM. Ms. Schmelzer, thank you. Um, Mr. Kusren, I just want to change gears from where we are. Um, there was a question about the video recording that was admitted as evidence uh, by Ms. Kusterman where you were speaking with your son, Calvin, and, and you used kind of the phrase uncoachable. Do you recall about how old Calvin was in that video? I'm guessing he was uh, <laughs> 11, 12. And how old is he today? He's uh, 15. How long before he turned 16? He'll be uh, 16 in March. Oh. Is he uncoachable? Um, I actually think he's very coachable now. Um, have, have things changed in all those years? Yes, absolutely. Because his uh, his drive to be the best uh, makes him want to soak up all knowledge that anybody can give him as far as a coach or Jen and I. And, and since that video was taken, say three, four, almost five years have passed, right? Right. Kids grow up, they mature. Right. Did Calvin grow up and mature? Absolutely. absolutely. Um, and have you worked extensively extensively um, with him in all those years to improve his sporting? Absolutely. Well, sports and classroom, whatever it is, I, Jen and I both, uh, push him to be the best and he wants to be pushed and uh, and do the best that he can in anything and everything that he's doing. I, have you overheard Ms. Klusterman having um, 
tough conversations with Calvin about education or uh, sports performances as well? I have. What uh, kind of stuff does she say to him? Similar, similar stuff. I mean, she might not know terminology of whatever hockey, but she tells him he needs to skate faster, harder. Um, she will. She probably yells more at Callie's games than maybe Kelvin's games, um, even to the point where I've said uh, we've got to cool it with her. She's. It's just different with her. She's out there doing her best, but likes to hear all just positive stuff and uh, have fun with her friends. And it's 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 just I mean every kid's going to be different. When you say that she yells, what what kind of things are she, is she saying? Is she? I mean, it's something. It could be something simple as skate, Cali, or or go, Cali, or I mean, and and a, and a lot of and all parents do it. It's it's no different than what I was saying to Calvin. He. He just likes to be pushed in a different way. He'd be the first to tell you that. Um, Jen knows that. Jen pushes him too. The girls just want to be pushed in a different way. It's it's just different. You got to read your kids and know um, that is not something that Kelvin complains about from Jen or I. Again, he that is one driven young man, and he and he's super excited to, uh, when we. Like in his weights class, when we push him to do better and better, I mean, he's quick to text us both and say, I just, I don't know, he's understand what he's talking about, but he'll be like, oh, I just PR'd in this personal record in this. And, and we, you know, we're both, oh, great job. We're so proud of you and I love you. And, um, you know, he loves that gratification too, but he wants to be pushed to hit that next step. And, and we both push him. Um, Jen's doing, Jen does the same thing and because Kelvin thrives on that. It's, it's not, um, I, I can even give an example of recently, um, Kelvin really, really questioned whether he wanted to play high school hockey. Um, um, and, th and that, that was, I think that was hard time. Jen and I both, to see that all of a sudden he's like, I don't want to play. And I, I didn't actually believe him that he didn't want to play. I think he was scared that he didn't wasn't going to make the team. And Jen, I, I, we had these conversations. What do we do? Do we let him stop? And we made the decision to push him and we made him play. And, and, and he is pretty happy that we pushed him to play. Um, I can't say what he said, but I I know he knows it's a big. It would have been a big mistake. I gave up football after my junior year in high school. That's my biggest one of my biggest regrets is not playing, and we don't want them to make that same mistake. And um, but I know Jen was hurt that he thought about giving, but I'm also we're, I'm sure she's glad we haven't talked about this, but glad that he played and because uh, he's loving it absolutely loves it um, but he was scared and and we're always pushing the kids each in their own way it's not to put them down it's to push them and motivate them and help them achieve with their goals as an athlete or a student or whatever they're doing um with respect to the uncoachable comment that was made to calvin three four years ago has that affected in a negative way the relationship you have with Calvin today? Um, no, I I don't think I could possibly be any closer with Calvin than what I am right now. Um, I talk to him multiple times a day. He calls me after any practice. He calls me and texts me after weights class. I mean, we are in constant communication. Um, and and I have that with the other two as well. Um, but um, no, I could I don't think I could possibly be possibly be any closer to Kelvin than what I am right now. We um, I, I love that kid more than anything and I'm incredibly proud of him. Um there was an a question that asking you that if your involvement with the children at present 
um, is due to the temporary order, meaning I believe it was insinuated that um, that you're posturing for this court as far as your involvement with the children and that you only started doing it when the temporary order came to place. Is that true? Uh, that couldn't be more of a false statement. Uh, I uh, love doing everything for the kids. Um, I Obviously, Jen and I's roles have, have adjusted. We have become fully responsible when the kids are with us, and it's 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 changed. It's made it difficult at times, but I wouldn't. I mean, not that I want a divorce or anything like that, but I love. I actually kind of love being a single parent and doing everything with these kids. Um, uh, the kids seem like they're in a great place. They're they're calm. They're doing well at everything that they're doing. I love being involved in the different things that I may not have been involved in before because Jen handled certain things. It was never, it was never because I just wasn't doing something. It was because we each had our role in our relationship and I've enjoyed transitioning, transitioning to doing the other things. And, and, and I, uh, I enjoy getting the kids up and getting their lunches and uh, sandwiches. Calvin takes four sandwiches. Uh, the kids eat at school, but they take snacks. And I love doing that and making the sandwiches and helping out where I can and getting them to the things that they need and picking them up from school and taking care of dinner. Uh, I am anxious to be back in the house where I'm not in somebody else's space. I'm anxious for my parents to get back to just being them. Um, Has it been hard um, being removed from your home? Uh, it's uh, very hard. I feel like I've invaded somebody else's space. I feel like a guest. Um, on the other hand, was it necessary given the tensions between you and Ms. Klusterman throughout those proceedings? Yes, it was very necessary. And uh, I think uh, it's better for Jan, it's better for me, it's better for the kids. Um, I think the kids are liking how things are. I think um, Jen has made comments about how it's calmer with me not at her house it's the exact same way when the kids are with me and not having jen around um jen and i just didn't get along like you need to in a marriage the kids deserve better the kids see the kids are in a great place well we're very anxious to get back into the house and get a routine where um i'm making dinners with my dishes fully my food, all that stuff. Uh, I can, because again, I feel like I'm a visitor in my parents' home. I can't stress enough how anxious I am uh, to get back in the house when, whenever that time is, is give Jen all the time that she needs. And uh, there was, speaking of that, there was some uh, reference to you making a countdown of when Ms. Klusterman was leaving the home. Was that a countdown of when you would be able to resume your normal life in your in in the home in the home you've had for years. Yeah, absolutely. And was there also conversations with Miss Klusterman that you would be flexible with allowing her the time she needed to to move and make the move peaceful? Uh, yes, I told her I didn't want her buying anything that she didn't love. Um, Meaning buying a house. Yeah, uh, buying a house. Um, I, I hope, hope that's what she did. Um, I, I want her to be happy. I want the best for her. Um, and with respect to the communications between yourself and Miss Klusterman, either on Our Family Wizard or text or something like that, to your knowledge, the children are not aware of those communications back and forth between you and her. They don't see anything on my end uh, i assume that jim's not showing them anything so to the extent that you guys get into disagreements or you know have your issues as you're 
starting out this new co-parenting lifestyle, to your knowledge, the kids are not exposed to any of that. Oh, no, I don't believe they are. I mean, at least on your end. Not my end. I, I don't, and I don't think Janet's. So if Ms. Klusterman is, you know, you better do this tonight or something like that, as far as on your end, kids aren't aware of her talking to you like that. Uh, well, I mean, as far as when the, the coat situation, um, I was on the phone with Kelsey and Jen was yelling in the background that you will give me that coat tonight. Um, so yeah, Kelsey heard that because uh, I think I we're back to the Kelsey coat. on the phone with Jen was, and I heard Jen yelling in the background. So yeah, Jen included Kelsey in that situation. Um, if you are upset with Miss Klusterman and express that to her, do you do that in the format of a message directly to her versus yelling over your child on the phone yes if i'm uh, frustrated with jen i send her a message and that's where that countdown stuff is because i'm tired of the, i'm tired of the games i'm tired of this is i mean this is stupid i mean being told that i don't go to counseling appointments and i shouldn't have my kids because of that it's it's just dumb um it's a it's a transition we both want what's best for the kids it's just jen not getting her way and she's making all this stuff up to try to get her way and i just want that done we move forward together is doing what's best for the kids in everything that we do um so i just want to clarify i mean those are private messages between you and miss klusterman but miss klusterman's saying things in front of the children on the phone making demands of you yeah, I mean, that's that's the time that it happened. Uh, I think normally it, it, the kids aren't aware, but they uh, were aware of it, that situation, which, I mean, it kind of bummed me out because it, I, Kelsey didn't say anything, but I kind of felt like it took away her excitement of having a coat, and all of a sudden Jen and I are arguing about a coat. Um, and that kind of made me feel bad. Um, I'm sure Jen would say the same thing. Um, um, I want to talk to you about the question regarding a Danielle Clayton taking the children or taking your two daughters to Grand Rapids. Can you please explain how that situation came about and what was going on? Uh, the kids, the four kids are very close friends. And can you, who are the four kids? Uh, Callie, Kelsey, and uh, the Clayton girls, Kylie and Maddie are their names. Um, they are very close. Um, the girls started texting about wanting to do a shopping day. At no point did I actually have any communication with Daniel about it. Daniel reached out to my mom, actually, um, because uh, I knew that was going to be an issue with Jen. And, and it got back to Jen that the girls were going, and Jen started sending me messages on the wizard forbidding me to allow them to see their friends. Um, exact wording, but it was it was pretty much that. She did not want that to happen. As far as I know, she has no control over uh, what I do with the kids during my parenting time, as, as I don't when they're with her. Uh, they're at no harm in that situation. They had uh, an absolute blast. And when, it, when the first, the trip actually got started, it was just Callie. Um, and I went back and forth on whether I was going to allow it because I knew Jen was going to make an issue. I just knew it. And then Kelsey started asking if she could go. And I, I, I first said no. Because I was scared of the repercussions of what Jen was going to do. What was the trip for? They were just going to go shopping for the day with their friends to Grand Rapids, go to Alamance. And Is he crying? And then and, and we decided I was going to take the heat and I let Kelsey go. And um, uh, were you unable to, I guess, were you relegating parenting duties or were you letting your children, you know, be I was, social and I was do letting, something fun? I was letting the children be social with their friends and they were so excited to go and gave them money to go. and. Um, it, was it common during your marriage um, and or have you observed Miss Klusterman, you know, send the kids off with other parents of 
friends so that the kids could do social things with friends. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so there's also been times where she's not accompanied your children and, and they've gone off with other people, other friends, parents that certainly everyone's vetted and made sure they're safe. Yeah. But. Um, the last time, uh, not, not right now with Jen having the kids, the last time she sent Callie to, uh, on one of her hockey weekends and Jen met up after work and Callie stays over. I mean, uh, my, we're, and that's then that's then that's great. I don't have an issue. The it works great. Jen had to work. It works great for Callie to be able to go do things that she wants to do. Um, but that that trip to Grand Rapids, the girls were so excited when they got back and had so much fun. And that just uh, I knew I was going to hear about it from Jen, and uh, she made a big deal about it. But I knew I had done the right thing and let them go. And, um, but it was it was a long day because I was nervous about. Now, we've heard allegations here today um, that Ms. Klusterman believes you're having a romantic relationship with a Danielle Clayton. Um, you didn't go on this trip. No, I didn't. I didn't go. And she's upset about that. She's upset I let the kids go with Danielle. Is this a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation? Had you gone, would there be a different upset, in your opinion? Do you do you think? Oh, yeah. oh come on, speculation. Been, uh, if I would have gone, uh, yeah, and I, that and that would have been inappropriate for me to go with them. Um, um, it, it, but how how long? Have, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to do what's best for the kids, and I and I had nothing to do with. It. I mean. I mean, I've made the ultimate decision, but I, the, kid, the kids were texting back and forth to each other. The, uh, Danielle reached out to my mom to clarify, and my mom even had a conversation with Danielle about how Jen was upset and we were scared. Sure, I'm going to object as he can't testify as to what his mom told Miss Clayton. Okay. Uh, we were uh, just concerned. I was actually concerned that they were heading to Grand Rapids, that maybe uh, Jen was going to follow them. She tracks their phones. There are times we go to places for five minutes and Jen asks the kids why they were so and so. It's really eerie how much Jen tracks the kids when they're with me and how they, she knows everything that we're doing. She was texting the girls constantly that day. Um, I'm gonna, my kids were safe. They were in a safe environment. They were some with somebody that would, loves those kids um, and takes care of them. The kids, the, the two girls had a fantastic day. Um, I, I will always do what's best for my children. And that day was to go to Grand Rapids with the Clayton girls. How long have your daughters been friends with the Clayton girls? I would say a few years. A few is in five, three. Yeah, three. Uh, I'll say three. Three years. Okay. Um, Wrap it up, Lori. They are very close friends. Land this plane. Land it. When you testified and were questioned about oh, no. Ms. Klusterman <laughs> being a teacher and you following her lead with respect to education, does that mean you're not involved in the children's education at all, or that you de defer to Ms. Klusterman in discussions about your children's Objection education? Objection leading. You involve her because of her specialized knowledge as a teacher. I involve her because uh, she's very good at what she does, and um, it has, it, it, in no way do I not want to be part of that stuff. I just think Jen's great at that. And uh, I've always just followed her lead because uh, it's in her line of work and she's excellent at it. Um, are, are there things that you're good at that you have talents or knowledge of um, that maybe Ms. Klusterman doesn't that you would have, you know, something to say about if it came to the kids, like maybe yeah. sports or something? Yeah, like absolutely. That, certain sports. Absolutely. Um, I mean, is, is that, do you feel like it's a benefit to your children to ex, 
found upon each of the parents' individual talents or skills or knowledge to help your children. A absolutely. Absolutely. Does that mean you're incapable of knowing or doing anything with respect to their education? No, that's not. And have that's you true at all. never been involved in their education before? No, I'm I'm involved. Um, I keep track of weekly grades and I'm on the phone, whether it's the kids are with me or last week, I, the week before maybe Kelvin's grades, it's lift. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a weekly thing. So they have time to, and I call them up and say, Hey, what can we do here? And, and what's got, what happened here? And, and I know Jen does too. And, um, but right next, next week is grades are right back up to where they need to be and our expectations of where they need to be and into his expectations. But just because I didn't go to a parent teacher conference for my kid that gets all A's and one B, I, I don't, I don't see the point. I think if there was an issue, we'd see it in his grades. If there was an issue, we'd hear from it with, from the teacher. Um, Jen has just had that personal relationship with the teachers and she likes to know more about what's going on in that. And, that, and that's great. It's not that I don't want to know. I just, my, my parents never went to a single, my mom, I mean, never went to a single parent teacher conference of mine. Um, I think Jen does that because she's the teacher and, that, and that's great. That's what she chooses to do. But again, my kids are doing great in school. There's not an issue. Oh. There was a question about whether or not the relationship between your parents and Ms. Klusterman is strained at this point in time. It's very strained. Is there, I mean, are your parents supportive of you and involved in supporting you through this divorce action? Absolutely, but yeah, with with time, it'll get better between them and Jen. They are they are very hurt by these accusations that she is just throwing at me, and and she knows that it's just a lie, and she'll just show up at a sporting event and act like my mom is supposed to just be all lovey dovey with her when Jen has just lied to the court, lied to the police, lied to CPS. Of course, my mom's going to be upset. Does that mean my mom's not is mean to Jen? No, my mom is just silent right now. She's upset she's hurting i mean she's, well, she's she sees me all upset any parent would be upset i'm sure her parents are upset and sad but my parents are they're not they love jen they're they're hurt by this the, this whole situation is happening but th they yeah. want a relationship with jen, jen does just, not care in a strange place <laughs> right now you can tell this isn't a normal divorce. There's nothing about this that is normal. I, everything about um, this is normal. Does Miss Klusterman saying things to you and your mother, or that you and your mother can go f off at a softball game for the children? Does that do you, do you feel like that helps the situation? That does not help the situation at all. Um, it's just weird right now, and and they don't like it either. Um, they never say anything bad about Jen. It's just a, it's just in a weird situation, just a weird place right now, and and they want to move past this and be civil and not be worried about what's going on or any any of that. They just want normalcy. They want what's best for the kids. They want what's best for me. They want what's best for Jen. Uh, they will always love Jen. They're just they're just they're just hurt right now. I have no further questions. Okay, hey, Ms. Lentz, any final questions for this witness? Yes, very briefly, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Klusterman, so I understand your testimony. You think conferences are only beneficial if a child is doing poorly in school. Or misbehaving. Our kids are not misbehaving. They're not getting bad grades. So you don't think there's any benefit to knowing and meeting your child's teacher in person, your child knowing that you attended their school conference, no benefits there? Oh, there could be benefits, but there's no harm in not. I mean, I know who their teachers are. I know how they're doing. I and get so many emails as far as from the school. I know what's going on. Are you aware that at the time Calvin had conferences this past month, he had a C minus and a C? Yeah, I just... 
made it very clear that I follow the kids' grades and talk with the kids about getting them back up. But you consider it's, there's some responsi there's some responsibility there for Kelvin and his grades up. Not it's not the teacher's responsibility to get Kelvin's grades back up. Kelvin does what he needs to do, his grades get back up in the next week, they're up. If there was a first, if there was an issue needed, we get weekly grades. Are you familiar with the phrase practice what you preach? Absolutely. So you kind of gave this whole long speech about how you hope that Jen and you can get to this point where you can adjust your parenting time schedules to coordinate for special events or if someone's running late, whatnot. Do you remember that kind of dialogue you gave? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I want, 100%. All right. So on November 21st, like literally last week, Ms. Klusterman texted you and asked if you would be flexible with her midweek visit, which occurs on five to eight. Is that correct? That's a yes or no answer. Yes. Okay. And I am going to remind you of your response, which says your parenting time starts at five and ends at eight. I don't care what you do, but I expect the kids to be back at eight. Correct? Okay. That's what you said. That is, that is correct. All right. So really that whole speech you gave, you're not actually practicing that or even attempting to do it right now. Nope, that's that's not true at all. All right, Mr. Klusterman, um, you had a lot of communication or dialogue about Ms. Klusterman not paying you for things. You out earn her though, is that correct? Um, not, not a ton, no. Okay, but we submitted a stipulation for income for this and you out earn her by about $12,721 per that Ow. stipulation, correct? Okay, that's fair. I was wrong earlier. So why <laughs> would a 50-50 split be fair if you're earning more money than her? A 50-50 split on like a coat? Yeah, why would that be fair if you out earn her? Well, we could we could talk about how since April I've one hundred percent paid the mortgage. That's two thousand dollars. So I'm two thousand dollars ahead right there. And you're keeping the house, correct? Correct. And Mr. Klusterman, Miss Klusterman is still waiting on you for a check for the house, correct? Correct. And she's waiting on you for sale proceeds from a truck that you haven't given her yet, correct? I have not done anything with the check, correct? Okay, so you're asking for all this reimbursement, but you owe her money right now, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. And I'm not you, sure how those two are connected, but you kind of it's not your job to interpret that. Um, you kind of gave a speech <laughs> about oh, for lack of a better term, kumbaya about Jen wants to stay in the house longer as she can. I'll be flexible. Do you recall that testimony? Absolutely, that's what I've told Jen. And on October 25th, 2023, you texted her, 36 days, my friend, better find a place to live, correct? I'm not sure I texted that. It may have been in the wizard, but. Okay, but you said that. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't really have a friendly connotation to it, does it? Oh, If, if I've made a comment oh, like that, it's, it's yes in or response no. to something Jen said. Okay, so does that have a friendly connotation to it, yes or no? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> and you said you're in constant communication with your son, Calvin. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty constant. Yes. Did you talk to him last night on the phone? Um, I probably did. During that call, did you ask your minor son to lie to the plaintiff about the location of a pink bike? No. You uh, testified. Yeah. You testified about um, this eye appointment situation, and during that testimony, you said you believe Miss Klusterman made that appointment for the children. Correct. Okay. Correct. Is that what you, okay? Yeah, Is that correct. because Miss Klusterman schedules all the children's doctor's appointments during your marriage? I don't. I, I wouldn't say all, but probably most, as most mothers probably do. That's not reason enough to get the kids 100% of the time. 
I didn't say it was, but you know, yeah, well, I'm, I'm you, saying it's not. you have a phone, right? You could easily pick up the phone and call and make an appointment for your child. Correct. There's nothing preventing yeah, you. We from divided and conquered each had our roles in our marriage in parenting. And Mr. Klusterman, there's been some testimony over the past three days about your mom helping out with parenting. Do you recall that? Yeah, my, my, my parents are fantastic. Uh, grandparents are always willing to be there for me, Jen, and the kids. Would you say that your mom does more parenting than you do? Uh, not even close. Do you find it odd that Miss Clayton reached out to your mom to coordinate this Grand Rapids trip instead of you? No, I don't because uh, Jen no, is... Just, uh, no, it's fine. Yeah, no, I don't. There has been a lot of talk about conversations that occurred between you and Ms. Klusterman and if the children overhear them or not. Do you recall those questions? Yep. So every time I asked you if the children overheard or were in the room, when you said something mean to Ms. Klusterman, you said they weren't there or I don't think they heard me. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that's, that's correct. You, you do realize he, he's going to take this under advisement. I, I, just, I just want to pr prepare you now. And then this one instant you just discussed about Miss Klusterman allegedly yelling about the coat. You said, oh, for sure, the child overheard that. Is that correct? Uh, yes, because I was on the phone with Kelsey. Do you think it's convenient that your one incident, the child overheard, and every other scenario we brought up, there's no way the child heard? Do you think no. it's convenient? I don't think it's convenient, but it's what happened. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Schmelzer, anything further? Um, yes, briefly. Oh, no. Thank you, Your Honor. No. Um, well, I, I meant any other any other witnesses. Here's the thing. I, I'll allow a few extra questions because I feel like factually there were a few things that were questioned on this final questions that weren't brought up before, but I don't, we're not going through a whole new, a whole nother direct. I mean, the bike question was, was brand new. And then some of the answers he wasn't allowed to finish with. So we're not going to go through another hour of, of redirect. Understood Ms. Schmelzer? Yes. I, I don't plan to do that. Thank you. Um, and then obviously, but until we're all clear, Ms. Lentz is going to have the final questions. So let's at some point, you're going to turn these turn these uh, facts over to me, and I'll decide them. So you can ask questions, but keep that in mind. That's been the format for every trial I do, and for uh, this specific every witness here. So I'm just sure. letting everyone know in case there's another objection to that process. Ms. Schmelzer. that's news to me. Usually, um, the final question. Thank you. Next the question, person, please. Um, from the person God. calling the witness. So. Um, so I do have a standing objection to that. But, Understood. Next question, please. Um, sir, what, what is what was what is this pink bike? What what came up with that? Can you explain that? Um, the kids have a uh, uh, it's a pink mini bike, um, like a little motorbike that uh, one of my uncles uh, lets the kids use. Um, Kelvin had uh, tried to use it uh, a few weeks back and the, him and his friends like broke it or something. They asked me, to, Kelvin asked me to fix it. And uh, so he gave it to me to fix. Um, then um, Saturday night, Jen started messaging me on the wizard about it, telling me I stole it and I'd be hearing from her attorney about it and then threatening me. and. Um, <laughs> It just said, yeah, I have it. Colin asked me to fix it, and that's 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 where we're at. So I have the bike to to fix. It's not Jen's bike. It's not my bike. It's not the kid's bike. It's my uncle's bike. But the kids are using it. Kelvin broke the chain. Him and his friends broke the chain. So I have it to to fix it. I I think Jen is just trying to claim everything that she can to. I mean, it's 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 something the kids use. It's not Jen's. It's not mine. That's and, and I just have it. She accused me of breaking into the house uh, to steal it, and that's not the case. I never told Kelvin to lie where it's at. I told Jen Saturday where it was at. I told her that I had it. 
to fix it. And that's where, that's the story. Um, the question was asked of you if it was odd or you felt it was odd that Miss Clayton reached out to your mom instead of you directly regarding this uh, shopping trip to Grand Rapids. And you said no. And you began to explain the reason why um, you were cut off. So could you explain the reason why you don't think it's odd? I don't think it's odd. Uh, um, everyone in our friends, family, everybody knows what's going on. Everybody wants to stay out of it. Uh, people don't want to be brought into it. Um, if I, I don't, no one wants to create things for Jen and I to argue about. Uh, so I, I have very, very little communication with Danielle these days. Uh, it's about the kids, but for that situation, she reached out to my mom. Um, cause again, she just doesn't want to make anything. I mean, people know that how Jen is attacking me or if I go after Jen or whatever it is, people, people know the people are tired of it. They're tired of it for us. They don't want to be part of it. So Danielle reached out to my mom about going and, and, and it, I obviously knew what was going on. We're just trying to make this run smoothly and not create arguments. And, um, it's it's just this is just nonsense the, it, it's just nonsense I, I just i just want to do what's best for the kids it's simple as that if the kids want to do something with their friend i felt they were in a safe situation i let them go um jen made it, made it very clear she didn't want them to go she actually told me she forbid it um and I uh, decided that I would deal with the wrath. Um, and here we are. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right, last possible question for this witness. How, yeah, how many questions? All right. Two. Go ahead. Mr. Kluisman, did you go to the marital residence to get the bike? Um, he brought it to me at, at the house, yes. And you're aware I there's did I step foot on the property? Uh, I can't say I did. I mean, he he brought it out to me. Okay, so you're aware there's an order for my client having exclusive use of that property. Oh God. Um, okay, but okay. So, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. The court's going to take the matter under advisement. If you choose to file a <laughs> written closing, you must do so within the next 21 days. That'll be a 20 page <laughs> limit, double spaced. <laughs> Anything further? No, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it just happened when I was out in Breckenridge. We did one. We did that that crazy, crazy hearing. Hot, hot, hot. I put on this thumbnail, and it just occurred to me at, towards the end of this that he's going to take this thing under advisement. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out what the ruling is. I can't imagine it's anything. I I feel bad for everybody involved. I I really do. The father is a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He cares about his kids. That much is clear to me. She's doing some sleazy stuff to him on the one hand. And here's what I'll say in defense of the wife. How can you be attracted to a guy who blubbers in public repeatedly? You can't. You have no respect. That doesn't mean you can make up, you know, CSA allegations. That's too far. But can I blame her for, for tapping out of, the, of that marriage? No. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> But do I think she's making up and or exaggerating things for her advantage? Yes. Yes, I do. I feel bad. I feel bad. These are. <laughs> 
I, you know, what do you want me to do? I, I didn't know he was going to take it under advisement. I just came up with the idea about five minutes before it happened. And then I warned you. I warned you as soon as I suspected it. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. The coat wins. Everyone, all hail the coat. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I, I, I don't know what to say. Don't get married. That, that that's that's always the message. The, by some miracle, I don't know. Based on the testimony, at least it seems though the kids are doing well. So that's great. That's great. They're, uh, the, the, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do? Kristen's up there. Maybe maybe she'll maybe she'll get me the order when it's when it's. Uh, there you go. She might hunt it down for me. I don't know. There's super Trevor City connection. <laughs> I have no Trevor City connections. I, I grew up there, but I, I don't know. I, I I don't know anybody up there now. So there you have it. There you have it. Thank you all for coming out. It was fun. In a horrible sort of way. <laughs> I'll see you all soon. <laughs>